I'ma keep it a bean. Stick to the script every scene. These from last year, but they clean. Say to say, I'ma take some else, but it's winning team. Charlie Sheen, fam gang, the regime. I'm from Piney Green. It's been overdue forever. forever. Ask me when it was dropping, said never. Never. Should've made you cut the feather. But I designed it Freemason Margella. What's good, y'all? Trying to hear the most woke, no joking. I'm back, back, back out again with a brand new video. And today, I want to talk about a guy who the Panthers did have a private meeting with. A guy in a position that we may need. But honestly, for me, a very confusing prospect who is a pretty highly projected prospect in this draft. But... For the Panthers specifically, I have more than a few. I have, actually, I, have, I have a lot of questions about Lonnie Johnson Jr., the cornerback out of Kentucky. There's a lot to like about him, and there's a lot that you're going to have to question pretty heavily. Pretty heavily. I'm not sure where to start. I'll start with his measurements. First off, the guy's 6'2", 6'3", 215 pounds. He's a big guy, a strong kind of guy, long arms. The guy is built to be an outside corner, a guy who's, you know, who you think would be a really good press cover corner. Let's look at his stats right here because even that, I should probably start with that, honestly. Look at his stats here. Two years at Kentucky. I think he started at a Juco his uh, sophomore year. But just in 2017, he had 41 total tackles, 3-4 loss, 1 sack, 5 passes defended, no interceptions. 2018, he had 23 total tackles, one interception, four passes defended, and a forced fumble. The biggest thing to look at here is 22 games played in college, one interception, nine passes deflected. That's very questionable for me. That's very questionable for me. I, I don't know what to think about that. Only one interception and nine total passes defended. I have some pretty big questions about that. Now, the guy has all the physical traits you should really want in a guy. Like I said, he's 6'3", very, very long arms. He's lanky. He should be very well suited to play as a press corner, but they never really put him in press coverage. His technique at the line of scrimmage just was not there. He played a lot of off-man duties where his job was basically don't get beat deep and let up the underneath pass a lot. And, you know, if the underneath pass gets completed, make sure you get the tackle. That was basically what his role was. He didn't really do too much in the in the way of actually defending against passes, you know, getting up at the point of attack, trying to deflect passes, you know, getting into the mix and the high point of the ball, or even trying to like undercut routes. The guy was just told, look, you're 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 a tall, big kind of guy, just don't get beat deep. And that's very questionable because for a guy of, like I said, his physical traits, you think he'd be in the mix, you think he'd be up there trying to contest balls. Maybe even jumping routes. Maybe even trying to do a little bit more. Every single analyst who watches this game, every single scout who watches this game, who has anything to say about him, just says he has kind of poor footwork. He doesn't really diagnose plays all that well. He doesn't really see routes developing. He's more of a reactionary kind of guy than a guy who can, you know, be proactive and see things developing before they happen. He's more of a guy who's going to sit back, watch something happen, and then decide, okay, this just happened. Let me do this. A kind of guy who has a one-two kind of delay between what's happening and what he does. That's not to say that he's a bad guy or that he can't develop, but Lonnie Johnson Jr. has some pretty big holes in his game that I think for a guy of his physical traits, I keep saying it, but for a guy of physical traits, he should be able to do a little bit more, and he did not show it. If you watch his highlights on YouTube, there's a lot of plays up there that you question to yourself, like, is this really a highlight? Like, a guy caught a ball five, seven yards away from him, turned up field, and they got a tackle. I mean... That's not really a highlight, in my opinion, for a defensive back. There's a video where they show his one interception he got in his college career at, like, three different angles. And you can tell it was kind of a duck that really should have been put at a much, much better angle. The guy had him beat. The receiver was actually behind him. And if the pass was thrown further into the outside, it would have been an easy, easy touchdown. It's over-the-shoulder catch. Like it, it, was, it was actually really undefended, honestly. But he got an interception off of a really bad pass. And, you know, it was I think it was his last game in college where he got his only interception. And I don't want to say that Lonnie Johnson Jr. is bad, but I'm going to say that he looks kind of bad for our scheme because he's basically a taller, slower Dante Jackson. He plays off man on one side of the field, on the right side of the defensive half of the field. And that's basically what Dante Jackson's responsibilities were last year. He played, what, 7 to 10 yards off the line of scrimmage. 
His duties were just to not really get beat deep. He wasn't really a guy who was going to, you know, jump routes or, you know, play in man coverage or press the receivers. Lonnie Johnson Jr. and Dante Jackson have just about the same kind of skill set, except Dante Jackson, d Jack can actually move. He has a lot more speed. He's a lot more fluid in his game. Uh, I'm kind of confused as to where exactly Lonnie Johnson fits into our scheme, unless the plan of action is to move Dante from being on the outside to the nickel. I don't really see the point of moving Dante to the nickel. He may be suited better there with his speed and whatnot, but I'm, I mean, I was also kind of confused as to what the scheme was for Dante, you know, being so far off the line of scrimmage last year. I wasn't really understanding that either. That doesn't really matter because all you're going to be doing in this situation is changing the name on the back of the jersey for the responsibilities of who's been playing CB2. It doesn't really matter to me which one of them is playing it, but if we have Dante already there who played it pretty well in the earlier half of the season last year, why even draft Lonnie? Why not just get a guy who plays the nickel corner position who can do some really good things there? And if you are going to move Dante Jackson to, to, the, to the nickel, then at least get a guy who has a different kind of skill set, who did different things in college than what Dante was already doing at that same position. It doesn't really make sense to me right now like why the team would have brought in Lonnie for a private meeting. His skill set does not really strike me as something to really be impressed with. Now, like I said, I'll keep saying it. His physical traits lead to believe that maybe you can develop him into a guy who can, you know, be a little bit more responsible in route coverages, maybe even bring him down eventually into man coverage underneath, maybe even get him into press coverage a little bit. But as it stands right now, I don't really see the upside in bringing him in unless it's to develop him as, you know, a guy who can get better year two year three, I think we need to have a definite kind of talent at the nickel position this year. We don't really have a ton of time to waste. I know you can develop guys and whatnot, but if you're going to spend a second round pick on a guy at a position that we need to have a starter at right now, I'm not all that confident in Lonnie Johnson Jr. Now, he could develop, and I know it's not all about stats. Stats don't tell the whole story, but as a second round pick, I don't really think it's worth the investment. There are other guys, even later in the draft, even though second round pick I would probably go with the safety, and Lonnie Johnson Jr. will probably be gone and off the board by the second round. I don't see him really staying around by pick 77 when we pick in the third round. I'm kind of confused as to why the team did bring him in for a private meeting. Maybe it's a smokescreen because every other team can see who you bring in. If we go with the defensive back in the second round, I want it to be a safety. But if we go with the corner, at least have it be a guy who played in the nickel or if he's going to be an outside CB2 kind of guy and you're going to bring Dante to the inside to play slot, then, you know, maybe have him be a guy who can play maybe some man coverage. or Maybe he's even better with his, with his legs, maybe even faster. He can change direction. He's not a liability. That's one of the biggest things you'll read about him and you'll see about him is sometimes he can be a liability and he doesn't really have the highest football IQ it's his physical traits, you know, kind of like a Tyree Jackson kind of thing where the good things are kind of inconsistent, but the traits are all there. If you can just get through to him, if you can like just teach him and, you know, get him working to the scheme, maybe, just maybe he can become a much better prospect, a much better player than he is right now. But at the onset, I don't really see it for Lion Johnson Jr. And honestly, I wouldn't even get a cornerback with our second round pick either way, no matter who it was. I don't want to get a corner with the second round. I'm not high on this guy for really any reason at all. I don't want to try to like develop him over time. He could be good later on. I could be wrong about him, but for our scheme and actually for the players we already have in positions right now, I just do not see why Lonnie Johnson Jr. would be the pick here. That's how I feel about it, but what do you guys feel about it? Do you like Lonnie Johnson? Do you not like him? Am I missing something here? Are his stats not indicative of his gameplay? Is it the way he plays? Let me know. Maybe I am missing something here. I, I might be way off base here. The team did bring him in for a private meeting, so there really might be something there. But, you know, when I'm thinking about the guys we have on the team, I've already said all that, man. I'll let you guys let me know in the comments below. Let me know all that. And one last thing before I go, if you haven't yet, please consider going down to that link in the description below. It's a petition to get the Panthers to maybe partner with this channel. If you're digging the content here and you want to show some support without spending any money, that's the best way to do it, man. Go to the petition and it takes all of 10 seconds to just fill out your name, hit the button, and it's already done. If you do, I really do appreciate it. And if you don't, that's all good too. You show support by watching the videos, liking the videos, commenting on the videos. That's all good. But no matter what, 
You already know to do that like button. Cheers to you, appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I've been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win. 